should try to. Welcome to the Monday Night Freak Show. It's the lighter side of the dark side, the Dark Mark Show. And I say this every week, but this might be the best show yet. I love it. Good. We've every got week. Every week. And we, it is. We were just talking dirty is. in Japanese, Josie. I know. I wasn't. Uh, Josie, but uh, as always, my Ellie lovely co Yeah. <laughs> we, ha- we, we, we haven't even started. <laughs> First, Josie, before we start, you have to say hello to the Dark Minions. Hello, Dark Minions. And uh, Josie, we have some wonderful guests tonight. We have uh, a little change of pace. Normally, I do my research on uh, wrestling sites and YouTube and model mayhem and and porn sites. But today, I actually wrote a book. I, uh, this week, I actually read a book. You wrote a book. I wrote a book and I read a book. I read this book entitled "There Is No God, and He Is Always With You," and I have the author. Did you read the whole thing? No, I didn't. Just see, see, you, see the bookmark book right there? <laughs> you just read the back. No, I read. Ha- I will be reading some of the back, but this I read half of it. This is the author right here, Brad Warner, Hi. and a very, very interesting guy. If you don't know him, if you do know him, you know he's very interesting. It's not interesting at all. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the man is a very funny author, very good, very good author, very enlightening, uh, and uh, horrible parallel Parker, but great, great writer. And not only do we have, and I, I told you we we're going to have Brad on, you're like, well, we got to balance that out with some something hellish. 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 <laughs> and we do have something hellish tonight. Hellish in a great way. Aww. Hollywood. Thank you. Now, do you go by Hollywood? Because I, I just don't use Helly. Yeah, Helly for short. Yes. Yeah, Hollywood is, is my, um, my music persona. See, I didn't even know you had a music persona. That's, that's <laughs> how, I, I, don't, I, I bet you like twice. <laughs> Josie introduced me and then... It's like you're on your own. And I have no idea. I didn't know you did music. Mm-hmm. And before we get into the show, because there's a lot to talk about in English and Japanese. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I do want to say we are being brought to you by, as always, Fatal Impact. Woohoo! My favorite store. Fatal Hell Impact. Oh, yeah. On the corner of, and I'm looking for their card to get the address. And you I just can't. pulled yeah, it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, where, where did your, the card, there? not your where did I other put? parts. I did, no, I that that comes it. later, but uh, no, we saw the card. It was here. But anyway. They're on the corner of Ventura and Van Nuys. You ever been to Fatal Impact? Oh. You ever been to Fatal Impact? No, but I'm no, familiar what, what, with Ventura and Van Nuys. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bet, oh, no. I'll bet you are. <laughs> no, the, on the corner of Ventura and Van Nuys, uh, they, they are the number one store for your counterculture needs. As a matter of fact, I went on their website, went to their eBay store, because we had Brad on, and he uh, used to make monsters in Japan, and we'll talk about that later. I looked up Godzilla. Ah. They've got Godzilla shirts. Really? They got everything. They got monster stuff. They got cool stuff. See these gloves? Yeah. Yeah, I've had them for a while. Team so they, they, don't come, they don't come like that. Shirts, but the team. good Edward. Uh, go, Eddie so? Monster. They have Team Edward yeah. shirts that have Eddie Monster's face on wow. it. <laughs> See the lipstick? That's Fatal Impact's brand. I should go there. Fatal yeah. Impact. You should go there. Everybody should go there because you get a 10% discount. Oh, really? You mentioned me. You mentioned Josie. You mentioned Helly. You mentioned Brad Warner. Mentioned the I show. I mentioned myself, and I get a 10% discount. Yeah, that's right. Go that's in there and right. say, hey. Oh, that's how cool they I are. was on the show. <laughs> Make sure you have change in the meteor because Kitty, she will talk your, she will talk your ear off. She's right. so nice. It's not like these snotty stores where they give you attitude. Well, they don't give you two attitude. They give us attitude. But <laughs> they, you know, it's not like those small stores where they got a bunch of crap. They got good stuff. All and right. uh, Fatal Impact, if you're not in L.A., because we got people listening all over the world, Russia, Canada, all over the country, go to FatalImpact.com. They deliver promptly. Go to their eBay store. They got great stuff. Sounds Speaking good. of great stuff, normally, sometimes, when I go to Josie for her Hollywood report, she's got nothing. <laughs> That's bullshit. No, I the first time I something. went to you, when we because, had Count Smokey on, I'm like, what'd I... you do this week? Nothing. <laughs> no, I forgot we were gonna. you were going to ask me that. So exactly. I, you know... And I forgot what I did. <laughs> Sometimes the weeks just blur. This week was not a blur. They just blur. But no, this week was awesome. It, awesome. it, it kicked <laughs> off early. Yes. And um, it kicked off with Marilyn Manson and Alice Cooper concert. And how was that? Ooh. It was really cool. Um, I've seen both of them several times. I'll but bet. I think this show was, was really awesome. Uh, Alice Cooper got his head chopped off by a guillotine. Oh, no. And his <laughs> band right now is great. Yeah? He, he How's Mantic? He, 
Manson was cool. I but mean, he, he, he didn't, he didn't uh, act up, and Alice Cooper didn't have to yell at him like like uh, Zon- like Rob Zombie did. He, he, he didn't make those demands on you like he did before? Oh, the demands. Oh, hell yeah. Did you hear about this from Sarah? I sure did. Yeah. Well, let's, let's have the whole Dark Mark audience hear about this. Yeah. Well, we went, uh, Helly and I have a friend named Sarah that will have come in to promote her new movie, Seed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Seed 2. Seed 2. Seed 2, because there's so many unanswered questions in Seed 1. <laughs> so go ahead. So Marilyn Manson. Well, we, we were at the Sunset Music Festival I was backstage. there. I performed. You did not perform. I, I was hosting. Where were you performing? I was at the On Key the Club. Corner? I was at the Key Club hosting for Many of Odd Nature. What? Okay, well, you didn't. You know Charlie, Charlie and Many of Odd Nature, Charlie Hattrick's band? I don't. I hosted I for the band. I met okay. Bruce Jenner well, backstage. We were, we were hanging Bruce out with Jenner. Marilyn Manson. Sorry, so that's we didn't when he wanted to take your show. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, he he had his handlers come up and were, was trying to negotiate as to where he was going to pee on us. Ew. <laughs> oh dear. Is that the story? He still got that, it. Uh, Oh, dear. That's well, he's getting older, too. so I think he's just incontinent. I don't know what's going on with him now. Uh, that pee would burn. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like a scene out of I, 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 think, I think you need to loan him your Depends that I got you for your birthday a couple weeks ago. But uh, hey. I've already used them. I'll bet you have. <laughs> they were used up. And what else happened this week? Ink and Iron. Mm. Ink and Iron. I was going to ask you about Ink and Iron because... My favorite convention. It's the tattoo convention. Got right. a new tattoo. Oh, really? Oh, really? Got some tooth bling. Tooth bling. Oh, oh I see. yeah, I yeah. thought that was just lipstick. I didn't know what was going on there. Yeah. <laughs> little bling is Gangsta too. Josie. Yeah. Wow. So what? Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, educate me. I got the ink. What's the iron? The iron is all the classic cars that are there. Okay. Uh-huh. They have a pinup contest. Yes, um, I saw they that. They have tons of bands. Right. Uh, I got to see the, Iggy Pop. The semi dead Kennedys. Awesome. Dead Kennedys. Semi dead Kennedys. Yeah. yeah. No Jello. <laughs> but East Bay Ray. Well, you know what? You know what? You know what the Kennedys should do now? Seriously. They should just get Fred Schneider from the B-52s to sing for them because he and Jello sound exactly alike. They do kind of. Yeah, yeah. I never thought about Holiday that. Holiday in Cambodia, Love Shack. It, what's the difference? Mm, Seriously. Yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. Rock Lobster. Oh, I'm sorry. Holiday in Cambodia. Yeah, anyway, so go ahead. Oh, Too drunk to fog. That's pretty cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. Um, I'm full of them. There's, 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 yeah, anyway. there's a good You're full of something. Here. Thank you. Josie, uh, so what else did you do this weekend? Ink and Iron pretty much, oh, Game of Thrones uh, finale. (laughs) Not as, uh, you know what, after two weeks ago, I have to say, um, I think think two weeks ago had everyone in shock. But... As, I don't as, know long how many as long as the as long as the impetus fans like me as long as the imp is still yeah because uh, you look you're boring Helly already uh, <laughs> she wants to if the imp pissed on her maybe that would be interesting but no, yeah because uh, yeah. we would see a whole lot of blood flying around right. it wouldn't be mine uh, <laughs> no ouch ouch <laughs> anyway so today so let can we get to our guest now yes please. that was Josie's week she uh, that, that was she didn't week. get pissed on by Marilyn Manson she watched Game of Thrones and Ink and I you must they must love you over there. You know what? I look like everybody else there. <laughs> How many copies of your book did you sell at Ink and Iron? I, I was there uh, working for another company. Okay. Uh, I was there working for Tattoo X, right. which is uh, tattoo sleeves. They're sleeves. Whoops, I'm losing my headphones already. It's getting crazy. <laughs> uh, they're sleeves that you put on to conceal your tattoos oh. for those corporate jobs. So you get tattoos ah. and then you conceal them? Yes. Corporate, the corporate people don't give a shit anymore. Everybody's yes, got they that do. Too. They do. All right. Well, I'm wor- working for wrong corporations. Anyway, I was kind of slide into the that man. to uh, our author here, Brad Warner. Hello. Brad Warner, I-, I was telling Josie about his story. Punk rocker turned Buddhist monk turned author. Mm. And she's like, that sounds like me. I'm like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> he actually, no, he actually, I mean, bu- you're not a Buddhist monk. You, you do meditate, as, as do I. He's wrote, written some such books as Hardcore Zen. I have picture books. Sit down, and, <laughs> sit down and shut up. That was uh, number two, yeah. Zen, Zen, like, uh, Zen wrapped in karma, dipped in chocolate, my favorite. <laughs> and the, the master of the provocative title has done it again. There is no God, and he is always with you. Am I blocking the camera there, or are you, you're just showing it to me? I'm sh- well, <laughs> there's, there's the book right there. All right. The mainstream cover for once. Yeah, well, it, uh, yeah, I was it, doing the goofy punk rock covers was getting... 
I like the goofy punk rock. Yeah, we all cover. love them goofy I punk rock. And I, and I like the them guys too, <laughs> on this one? Well, uh, that, that's a guy named Johnny Crap, and he's a, a Johnny Montreal Crap. guy. <laughs> sounds like someone I would know. It sounds like one of my friends. Well, you, I don't uh, know. What, uh, funny you should say that, because I was trying to find my, co- my copy of Hardcore Zen, which I, I think I've gone through the second one, but I loaned it to somebody. Oh. Never got it back. The cover is a close-up of a toilet. Yep. What was the cover of your first album? Toilet. Oh, See? Hey. See? <laughs> <laughs> Great minds think alike. Because they aren't pissed off, you know. So you grew up in Akron, Ohio. Uh, yeah, mostly, yeah. When I wasn't in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> no, th- th- I I'm thought it was to... the same thing. Akron, Africa. It's kind of the same. No, they're, they're, they're a little different, I think. Start with an A. So, <laughs> yeah. so you, you, you were born in Akron. Yep. Then you moved born to yeah. Africa. Then moved to Africa. Then moved back to Akron. Right. And uh, then lived in Japan for 11 years. And uh, yeah, I've, I've lived a bunch of places. Yeah. And now Los Angeles, which is even weirder. I can imagine. Well, tell us what you did in Japan. Because what did I do in Japan? Uh, well, mostly I worked for this company called Tsuburaya Productions, who were founded by a guy named Eiji Tsuburaya, who was the man who invented Godzilla. So uh, Tsuburaya Productions made this TV show called Ultraman. Which Ultraman. <laughs> some people remember. At Monster Palooza. Did you, yes. did you oh, guys yeah. see the Monster oh. Were you at Monster Palooza? I, I was the guy translating for the for, for oh, those guys. Oh, they were so, so. cute. They uh, were so nice. Yeah, so, you, so you met them. Yes, yeah. I did. I was the translator when they went on stage. They were across so. from Lita Ford. <laughs> I didn't see Lita Ford. Oh. Oh, I Lita. did. Lita was great. Uh, Better than Ace Fraley. Oof. But oh, uh, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're a big Kiss issues. fan as we all are, yes, too. Yes, yes. I kind of walked by Ace, and he looked kind of sullen. Angry. And I thought, yeah, oh, he was angry. Yeah, he was kind of <laughs> pissed off that night. <laughs> maybe I won't go up there. He was kind of pissed off, and I think that's because he looked uh, older than Martin Landau. But that's uh, that's all. That's all <laughs> Walter oh Matthau. That's a whole other story. Yeah. But so you were in Japan. You were making. You were working for Ultraman and those, yep. those shows. Yeah, yeah, with the guys in the rubber suits and the balsa wood buildings and right. all that, the whole bit. Yeah, and, it was great. And this was after Dementia 13, your band? Yeah, yeah, had a band called, wow, you remember that. Uh, you had a band called, I do a research. band called Dementia 13, yeah. Yes, yeah. and uh, I'm trying to, and, and I, I apologize, I know a lot of people that are watching are fans of yours. Are they? Have read your books. No, I posted a picture of you with a guy like a mini Godzilla. I didn't know what it was. That like was a, that was that was Godzilla. That was. Uh, it kind of looked like Godzuki. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> am, but I, am I doing the wrong thing? <laughs> no. I, I just saw a gesture over there. Yeah. I don't know what that <laughs> that, was, was, that, was, that was Godzilla. That was oh, like okay, my, okay. my shadow puppet. Right. Oh, good, good. <laughs> just don't have a shadow. Helly right has now. multi-talented. I had <laughs> no amazing, idea. Right? That was that was really lifelike. I like that. But it, it, and people just went crazy for that that picture of you with really? mini Godzilla. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah, yeah. That was that was the actual Godzilla head from I forget what movie. But uh, a guy I know n- named uh, Shinichi, Shinichi Wakasa does the Godzilla costumes, or yeah, he did the last five Godzilla movies. So those are like, yeah, so the the real so guys the, walking that, around are like five foot five. And they're 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 actually pretty short. The the first guy Haruo Nakajima is pretty short. Uh, yeah, he's shorter than me. I'm like five eight. So and he's I'm bigger than he is. Right. So, yeah. So and, and so I'm just trying to get the the little mini biography because you guys don't don't know Brad. No, we haven't. No. So okay, Sorry. so so Akron, then you go to you go to Africa, you go back to Akron, you start a <laughs> punk band, psychedelic punk band. Well, I did a psychedelic band. Or I did a punk band called Zero Defects, which reformed and and we're still together again. Uh, okay. We're going to be doing some shows at the end of the month. Oh, but in, Ac- uh, in Akron uh, and Cleveland. So oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, uh, yeah, yeah. Then while I was over in Japan, I well, I'd, I'd been interested in Zen even before I went to Japan, and in Japan, I found this teacher named Gudo Nishijima, and I started uh, hanging out with him, and he wanted me to ordain as a monk, which I thought was a stupid idea, <laughs> uh, but but he kind of talked me into it and talked me into becoming what they call a lineage holder within his within his lineage, and then he wanted me to be the head of his lineage, which which I thought was completely insane. Uh, but I did all those things, and you're downplaying it. But I've seen you pictures of you in robes. Yeah, yeah, I got robes. And I shaved my <laughs> head once, and I looked like a I don't know. I looked like Nosferatu with a shaved head because I got one of those pointy heads. It was not good. That, nah, well, you go to some well, of the clubs I go to. That's not bad. Teeth. Yeah, I need the teeth. But, uh, that's but, all I was missing. Like and and and, and, and Helly, I know nothing about you apparently because <laughs> I didn't know you were a DJ. I didn't know you were a musician. I didn't know you were a producer. <laughs> I didn't know you had saucy pictures on the internet that I could just <laughs> access at the click of a button. Oh my gosh, there's not that many, actually. <laughs> no, I, 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 I tried, I tried, I tried to get, I, I tried to get the sauciest I can, but uh, you know, some of our guests, it's a, it's a little easier access than you, Ellie. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. Have might have to actually pay for them. So I, I don't even. Where, where, are, you're an LA girl, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Uh, well, I've, I've been actually I've been out in LA uh, for eight years now, but I'm originally from Canada. 
Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's... Hey. that's... <laughs> You don't know anything about her. Uh, you don't. You don't know anything about well, me. <laughs> what, what, what are you doing, a Scotty from Star Trek? What accent was that, Josie? You don't know anything about her, like Captain. <laughs> Captain, please, the engines. No, a boot. A boot. A boot. Okay. I don't know anything about you. Don't know anything about me. No, and please. That was kind of please bad. stop us before we start singing. Really please stop us before we start singing Tom Sawyer, please. <laughs> or oh Terrence and Philip. That's actually my favorite. Uh, take off so tell me so we're gonna go yeah. a- after the show we're gonna go to my my house we're gonna watch uh the bob and doug mckenzie movie and all sorts of memories slaps slap shot now let me ask let me ask <laughs> no let me ask you a question because I, I i say this to every canadian woman i i meet and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't oh. but Uh-oh. i've never had i've never heard one say no canadian <laughs> women like to do two things they start with f is that correct what are what are these two things <laughs> Fight and fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this one will do it for the right price. <laughs> but you like the fight. Okay, could you kick Brad's ass? Come on. Let's... I, I, I verbally fight. I'm, I'm really small, so I, I can't scrap. But I mean, when you're in Canada, didn't you scrap? No, I ne- never, I never did actually. She oh, okay. has spider monkey stories. Oh, are you talking about my birthday last year? Yes. <laughs> oh, please do tell. Oh. Spider monkey, what was that? <laughs> she got in a fight. Oh no, oh. I got sucker spider punched monkey. by my ex-boyfriend at my birthday last year. Oh. No, yeah. I'm not talking about that. One. Oh, okay. I'm, ta- I'm talking about <laughs> at, at the whiskey. That's so sad. That was my birthday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> how many people really punched? How many birthday. guys punched you at this birthday That's party? So Just sad. one, and he's not in the country anymore. Oh, thank goodness. Yes, he shouldn't be. Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. We can't tolerate that. But yeah, yeah. so we chased him out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get in a scrap, Josie? Because I know you can scrap a little bit. <laughs> no, I didn't. I haven't been in a scrap in a long time, thank well, God. Well, and well, I don't want to say that out loud because... <laughs> the, the show's still young. Uh, Helly, now you, you're a you're producer. You. Mm-hmm. No, 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 don't start. Don't start. You, no, no, you're, you're a DJ, you're a producer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just came back from, were you in Denver or where were you at? Uh, no, I was flying through Denver on my way back from Canada. But um, the last big gig I played was um, just outside Tokyo. It was at uh, Oiso Beach in Japan. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, the Hacienda Festival, which is a big festival. Um, it's an international thing. And that was their Japan stop. And uh, it was uh, headlined by Afrojack and John Digweed and Pendulum and James Zabiella. And, uh, well, I bet you got. Yeah, a, I bet like, you got a lot of Japanese fans now. Um, you know what? Japanese fans are great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I hope blondes. I do because I, you know, I'd love to go back again soon. So. So, yeah. so how did you go from Japan? That you flew through Denver? And no, 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 no. I, I, I travel a lot, and every time I travel, I check in at an airport. Right. So on Facebook. So. Um, yeah. So that's what I saw. I just. Uh, yeah. No. No. Actually, since since um, Japan. Uh, I've been, I was in Boston and then, uh, you're in New York too. Yeah. I was in New York. That, that was before Japan though. Um, and, uh, I was just in Canada actually for, for a few days visiting family and I came back through Denver. So I did the check-in on Facebook in Denver. So So hopefully that's how that happened. We'll be listening to one of your songs later on the show, Mm -hmm. but how would you describe your music? Uh, you know what? This one is actually really unique. I just, uh, I just got it back from mastering like at three o'clock this morning and I took it over to uh, Street Sounds because the owner right. there, it's a record store in Melrose, the owner there, Bob, he taught me how to DJ. And if anyone knows um, electronic dance music in the city, it's him. He's like straight up OG DJ. Right. DJ. <laughs> anyway, so um, <clears throat> I'm like, dude, what would you classify this as? And he said, Italio dance analog. <laughs> What's Italio? Uh, Italian, Italy. Italian dance. It was like oh, so. He said Italian. that this this song you're gonna play later. It's um it's gonna be the second single off my new um EP that's coming out, and um he says it's got like a lot of inspiration, uh sort of like the '80s new wave. All oh, right. Yeah, um, and it said like the the new Daft Punk album is kind of analog sounding. So it's kind of this new thing that's coming back. But I didn't even know it. But it's just whatever. It just turned out that way. Anyway. Good timing. No, oh, I'm sorry. I was listening to the Italio. We were Daft Punk and the whole thing. Mm. No, but <laughs> you want to hear about Hustler, don't you? <laughs> we're going we're to get to that. Hustler. But first, let, uh, let me go. Let me go back to because I, I when I let me tell you, I uh, I do classify myself as a Buddhist, although I'm very lady, lazy Buddhist. I a ladies Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a ladies Buddhist, baby. That's what I am. I'm the ladies Buddhist. No, that, that we're going to get to that too. This, this guy, 
I, I, he, on his blog, he refers to himself as the Paul McCartney of uh, Buddhist teachers. Uh, <laughs> I was just saying, I know how Paul McCartney feels having to play Yesterday all the time. No, no, you, there was a, there was I a column. <laughs> well, there, there's a whole yeah. So uh, apparently, a lot the ladies love you, Brad. Really? That's what uh, there was some column where I haven't heard that. Uh, I, re- I don't know what I read, but I read no. something where you were. Where you were, you know, the, you, the, all these ladies, and you're like, wow, now I know what P- Paul, McCart- Paul McCartney feels. I think that was after your sex book. With the... Oh, I don't know. After your sex <laughs> book? What's he did a sex book. book. What I was that title? Uh, that was called Sex, oh. Sin, and Zen. That's got a pink, uh, lurid cover. Uh, yeah. Where's that book? <laughs> it's real dirty. <laughs> I loaned that out. I haven't gotten it back. I loaned it to a swinger. Oh. And she, I, I haven't gotten it back. My maybe you don't need it back. Well, maybe. <laughs> Apparently <laughs> not. You might Apparently they got some ideas uh, from your book. together. <laughs> yeah, you but might, you might I like should it. meditate more. I should, there's a lot of things I need to do more. But uh, well, I first got into, into Buddhism by reading Tommy Chong's book, which... Uh, Tommy I Chong? Chong? <laughs> Tommy Chong from Chichen Chong wrote a book about... about what, Buddhism? Yes. Wow. I was going to bring it, actually. Dude. Cool. I should have brought it to loan it to you. It's called, <laughs> it's, called, it's called the I Chong. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Uh, I, he, I heard uh, meditations from the joint. Yeah, because yeah, he, yeah. he was in jail. He was in jail, and the whole. And so I thought cool. it was going to be like a whole biography of Cheech and Chong or his biography, and it was all about how, you know, this was like the worst thing that happened to him, and through meditation, he actually turned it into a positive thing. Huh. And I, I, I should read that. It sounds interesting. I, I had no idea. I, wish, I, I thought it was what you said. I thought it was just about. I, I was going to bring it mm. to, to Lona to you since you did uh, get me this book. But that's why I was uh, – your writing, after a while I started reading, honestly, a bunch of boring Buddhist books. There are a few out there. And then I, and then I, I, started, I, got, I got it to you. And, and, and here's, here's a quote from the back of your book oh, no. from Vicki Jensen, the director of Shrek. Everybody yeah. loves Shrek. Mm-hmm. Everybody, Everybody loves Shrek. Everybody loves Shark Tale. Brad Warner frames Buddhism with something that touches my soul on the very deepest level. Humor, yeah, which is true, and which is which is ironic because this is actually probably your least funny book. It's very serious. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's, it's, it's <laughs> funny. There's jokes in it. No, I know. There's <laughs> jokes. The whole the whole Twitter feud with Deepak Chopra is great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and of course on the on the back of this book we have uh, from uh, D. Randall Blythe, the lead screamer of Lamb of God. There are plenty of Buddhist spiritual authors on the market. We'll gladly sell you a pat on the back. Brad Warner is not one of these. Yeah, I like Randy. I'm yeah. glad he got out. He uh, he was. Uh, you know about this thing? Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, murder charges mm-hmm. and all this in Czech in uh, the Czech Republic. Mm-hmm. Right. But uh, but they acquitted him of everything a couple like a week ago. Wow. So it was good. Yeah, that was. I mean, was he there on tour? He was there on tour. Fan jumped up on stage, and nobody knows what happened next. But the fan ended up uh, in the pit, and he he cracked he, his head yeah, open or did something. something. Yeah, he died. Mm. Uh, and then they were trying to uh, charge him with murder for that. But, you know, it was hard to, I guess it was the hardest thing was explaining to the jury that this is this is what happens at metal shows right. all the time. You right. know, and, and, and it's really sad. And, and, and he talks about it on his blog, having uh, gone and met the, 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 the guy's mother and talked to her and, uh, right. you know, held her hand and all this. You know, because he didn't, he didn't Yeah, he didn't mean to, to do happen, that, yeah, you know, obviously. Like, so, but uh, yeah, it's really tragic. But he 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 got acquitted of the charges, which right. is great. And uh, but I mean, this guy, I mean, he's got so many quotes. I I can't even. I have to, I have to actually gaze at my phone to even think about these quotes that you have because I did I did put some. I, I don't even know some of. I, I I I subscribe to a guy on Twitter who puts my quotes up because I don't remember half no, this I, stuff. I, I, no, if you look yeah. up Brad, if, if you look up first off, there's. If you look at Brad I don't remember Warner, half of what I say. Yeah, I know it's, it's just like yeah, you just throw. Well, it out you, there, I you think know. you would remember this if you said this. Oh no! If a tree falls in the forest and hits a mime, would it make a sound? <laughs> I'm sorry for that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, reality's uh, uh, reality's all you got, but here's the real secret, the it's real enough. miracle. It's enough. It's enough. Yeah. And uh, how many Zen masters does it take to <laughs> screw in a light bulb, the plum tree in the garden? Well, that's these are <laughs> these are, there, there's a there's a whole story behind that joke, but uh, yeah. there's a koan, one of these Buddhist stories that say, "Why did Bodhidharma, the the master who brought uh, Buddhism into China, they say, why did Bodhidharma go to China?" Right, and the answer is the plum tree in the garden, and you're supposed to sit and contemplate why that's the answer to the question. Right, so that it was a, if you have to explain, if you have to explain, you have to the, explain the joke, the joke I, uh, <laughs> see as a comedian, it's yeah, a good, it's so. a good, no, it's a good joke. Seriously, I, I yeah. want to be a comedian who goes up on stage and just explains his jokes. Oh, trust me, there's so <laughs> many out there. Emery, how many comedians do that? I like deconstructionist comedy. Uh, that if that's all there is, geez, that's I mean that's all I ever see. 
Oh, really? I didn't even know. No, that's that's the whole thing about comedy these days. It's like, it, 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 and there's some people that do it great. Mm. There's a lot of people that do it really bad. Well, that's that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's the thing with everything, right? That's, that's like DJing, Helly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many bad DJs have you sat through? Well, you know what? Thanks to uh, laptops and software, it's really hard to be a bad DJ these days. Really? I bet I could. I bet I could pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> or they just play the, really bad music. Me. I tried to engage you, Hallie. To I know, but I, I thought I answered learn, the how, question. How did you learn how to DJ? I learned okay. how to DJ um, from this guy, Bob, at Street Sound. So I actually learned on vinyl, turntables, techniques, 1200s. That's do. Yeah. And I, when, I, when I DJ, I don't even use a laptop. So, All right. so that's old school. Uh, if I was DJing on vinyl, that'd be old school. Um, I just, I don't know. I just think it's credible. Right. Yeah. No offense to anybody out there that's a good DJ that, you know, uses a laptop. Because there are a lot that do. Most But, do. I mean, yeah. But then you've got, like, people that, like, Skrillex doesn't do it. And I would, ima- I would imagine that the, some of the DJs, not Skrillex and obviously the people on that level, but some of the people that are at your level or below your level are like, oh, they, they just like her because she's a girl, right? Do you get some of that sexism in the DJ world? I get, I get that sexism all the time. But it's, it is usually from people that are below my level. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to get that from me. <laughs> TDJ. <laughs> so tell me about Hustler. Come on. <laughs> we, 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 we've teased them long what's, enough. What's, what what's happened? What's what's Hustler? What, yeah, Hustler. I've uh, been working with them uh, for about two years now. And uh, I, uh, I was the, uh, the original. I was Lady Gaga for the, uh, the parody for This Ain't Lady Gaga. Um, and I <laughs> got an AVN and an XBiz award for Best Actress in a Feature Film. For that. Right. that oh really oh i see ah. you know, I mean, I mean, i'm not one of those girls that runs around like light, you know like just with on. like my resume <laughs> tattooed on my my arm you know i just there's something tattooed I am, there i thought it was your resume i was looking no i like it the speakers, is. It's really. speakers headphones so how does the lady, lady gaga movie well how does that work out it worked out really great. I got an Avian and an Expos uh, nomination and, for and, that. And you and you you do deserve it. But I, I, first off, first off, I'm gonna first off, I'm gonna check that out for myself. And yeah, it's actually great. Sure I, I, I I totally recommend it. If I were to recommend one, you know, feature that I've done, I'd say Lady Gaga. Could you do your Lady Gaga voice uh, for um, me? This is it. Really? It's this sort of stuck <laughs> yeah. up, snotty, valley girl voice. That's <laughs> that's exactly what I did for Lady Gaga, and it's pretty spot on, actually. Wow. <laughs> So she's from New York. She's not Valley Girl, is she? But she's nasally. She's uh, she is. And nasally. she's you know she talks like this. So were you like were like, how should I put this delicately? <laughs> were you singing while people were fucking you? Was that what happened or what's going on? Was I what? Was I singing while? Were you singing while people were fucking you? It was like uh, actually we're like, we're like the, guys the, like we did do music videos in it, like okay. parodies of music videos. But like some guys like some guys like having sex with you and you're like rah rah ga ga ga. Is that what happened or no? Probably can't use the the. No, I'm, oh, I'm sure. No, the singing, the singing was separate. Do, no, we do, we, we do, did do, actually. Yeah, yeah the, use her songs. The, uh, Axel Braun, who's the director, uh, he uh, he um, rewrote some of oh, her right. songs, okay. put put different lyrics to them. Ah, yeah, wow. that's, that was smart. One of the first porno movies I ever saw, and this is a treat for the audience, was uh, <laughs> it's called Married with Hormones. <laughs> And it was, a, it was a parody of Married with Children. Mm-hmm. Oh and they God. did the Love and Marriage song. And they're like, it's I tell your brother, don't fuck Kelly without a rubber. It was great. It was on VHS. It was Who a long was time in ago. it? Do you remember? I'm sure Ron Jeremy was in it somewhere. I don't know. It was Ron a while Jeremy's ago. Ron Jeremy's in too. <laughs> He's in everything. <laughs> what is Ron? I was in a movie with him. I'll bet it you was were. an adult. No, what, what, it was a trauma film. Yeah, Tales, Tales, from, Tales from the Crapper. Tales from the Crapper. Yes. Yeah. Well, you're so Joey proud Strain of was in it. This is the second time you brought up Tales from the well, Crapper because, on this show. Because we brought up. There are so many Count actors Count Smokey was in that. That, w- that were in it. So when their name comes up, I'm like, they were in that and, movie too. And, and, and by the way, Josie, since we didn't mention it, you are in the Coma White video for Marilyn Manson. Yes. Wow. Or yeah, I just found out today. It's been a while since I've seen it. That was, that's the one where he was J- Kennedy and she. It was, was banned, but now with you t- with YouTube. But he was Kennedy and she was uh, Jackie. Jackie. Oh, Rose McGowan was Rose Jackie. McGowan. That's when and we what were you? Together. Were you I was shooter? a shooter girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> screw you! I, Are you I saying say? things falling? Not that oh. I could see. Okay. Please. You better watch it. No, stop it. What are you going to do? Put, you going to put me between your legs this week? No, I'll use a couple of those devices that no, you No, no, no. De- those are my devices. Well, so uh, she's a hustler AVN. You've had some 
controversy. You, you're, you're, this guy's a oh, very yeah, controversial yeah. figure <laughs> in the Buddhist community. I don't know if you're aware. Because you write... Do you still write a column for Suicide Girls? Yeah, I still do. I don't do it as... I used to do a weekly column for Suicide Girls. Now it's sort of an occasional column for Suicide Girls. But yeah, I still write for them. And that uh, didn't sit well with a lot of uh, a lot of the sort of uh, more toffee-nosed or whatever you want to call them Buddhists who, who don't like... I'm using a Monty Python word. <laughs> I was going to say... <laughs> You know, for the, for the more conservative Buddhists, yes. they don't they don't like the fact that I that I that I write for so-called uh, porn. Except uh, Suicide Girls gets really pissy if you call it porn. So I didn't call it porn. Right. It's Just not, not though, is it? No, not really. But yeah. you have to be eighteen to get. Uh, to yeah, I think you do to be a member. And uh, there, there there are ways so around it, Joe. Yeah. There are ways around it. I, I <laughs> yeah. Know. yeah. Are you over fake eighteen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> see, where's the whole the whole fake ID? market is bottomed it, out because of that it's you done know, all it's you have done to do is, it's done yeah and of course you could just you know if your parents bust in you say look i'm trying to get some enlightenment from brad warner <laughs> and this picture just came up and it was it just happened to be it there. was it yeah. was some girl as lady gaga blowing some guy i don't know what was going <laughs> Not on a suicide girl for the record <laughs> i didn't i didn't say you were i just said it just other things pop up on the computer you know what i'm talking about do people ask you because i get asked all the time just because i have tattoos uh -huh. they say are you are you a suicide girl people who no. don't know and actually they asked me to be one mm. and i went through the forums and they <laughs> would own all content of yeah, my yeah, photos that, that. so i was like screw that because i'm not i'm not into having people own uh, and actually my uh, products yeah you it, know actually i let i let them use my product but they they, they turned me yeah. down it was weird <laughs> i went through the whole the whole application process you didn't have enough product apparently not <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that a Muttley laugh? What was going on? That, there? Was, that was my Muttley laugh. Oh, was that your Muttley yeah, laugh? Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I was going to tell you, I, I have a, I have my name picked out for when I get my big break and get to be a porn star. Oh, what's that? Mm. It's uh, Justin Beaver. <laughs> there's got to be one. Beaver. There's got to be one going on there, right now. There, there's no Justin. Yeah. And when, you and, when I, and when I start directing porn, I'm going to be Francis Ford Copulate. Yes. That's, so that's a good one. I've that. <laughs> I worked those out. So if the whole You've Zen thing is about this for a while, I'm, I'm I, I, you know what, Brad? <laughs> he has, he has a plan B. <laughs> I you got know, a, I got a plan. You know, Brad, <laughs> I hate to tell you, and I might be the only one that knows this, but uh, you remember the Jerky Boys? Uh, kind of, yeah. I the, remember their existence. The I, uh, one of the Jerky Boys went solo. Oh Kamal. No. Uh huh. And he did a porn parody where he said Francis Ford Copulate. Oh no. Mm. And Marlon Brand hole and all this other <laughs> stuff. But uh, anyway, uh, I, I think. It's uh, I, maybe we should get into some intelligent conversation. <laughs> sure, I can possibly. do that too sometimes. So, what 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 was your impetus to to write? There is no God, but He's always with you. Ah, uh, it, it's because I got I got into Zen Buddhism because I had this deep interest in finding out what God was all about. Sorry, I'm playing with this little doohickey here. Um, the viewers at home can imagine. Right, but. Um, yeah, it's so because so, uh, a lot of people think it's some guy. It's yeah. some guy looks like Chris Most Cornell. Don't say that. Some guy looks like Chris Cornell in the sky. Yeah, that's yeah. looking over us, and he he put all four of us in a room, and he's also controlling traffic. Yeah, yeah. And he's you know he's at Fatal Impact, making sure everybody comes in with yeah. a ten percent discount hey, and all that. He's doing all that. He's juggling all that. That's just L.A. That's just a valley. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I knew that kind of image of God was stupid, but I, I also felt that there was something within uh, this, this life that could be called spiritual or holy. And I, I felt it very strongly, and I started doing this meditation to try to kind of come into contact with that. And I decided it was about time somebody wrote a there have been all these books, of these sort of neo-atheist books that have come out. Right. Um, and, and, and uh, you know, most of what they say I agree with, but what, they're, what, what they tend to be debunking is this very sort of childish idea of God that, uh, you know, I don't know how many, you know, p people disputed me when I said this on the blog, but I don't know how many religious people even believe in that sort of a God anymore. I mean, I know there are some. Yeah, trust me, I know a few. Yeah, 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 I mean, I know there are some. But 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 I thought they're not really taking this argument very deep. They're just saying, oh, there is no guy on a throne in the sky no. controlling us. But but that doesn't mean there's not some ground to this to this reality. And and I, I think uh, my my Zen practice has been a, a, a long process of uh, getting in touch with that. God, I just brought the whole tone of the <laughs> thing down. <laughs> well, very I, interesting. I had to get. <laughs> like no, but I, I had I had to get into it because. Uh, I no, I really, you know, really. When when I do most of my interviews, it's all stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, the, trust me. That, then that, yeah. Well, well, if you want to stop there, that's fine. But I, I no, I, I, I no, I've always, I, I've always had the, I've that's always had, the, I've always had the belief. But it, 
in in what limited Buddhist practice that I have compared to you and probably everybody else in this room, is that uh, you know when I meditate by myself, it's one thing. When I meditate with a group of people, it's another right. thing. There is something there. There's something there. And there's a different energy there. And the and the longer you the longer you do the practice, the more you start to come in contact with something that. I think y using the word God is problematic, but that's specifically why I chose to use that word, because right. it is problematic. And we as Western people have to kind of confront it. And I, I feel like a lot of people within the Buddhist realm uh, don't want to don't want to deal with it you know they're like right. oh we we've rejected god and we're going for something else but if you keep keep going in the practice you start to face something and you go oh wait a minute maybe this is god here you know right. it's not what i thought god was it's right. not some guy who's going to tell me you know go do my bidding or whatever uh but but there is some sort of uh, there's some sort of essential something un unnameable something that that uh, that sits at the very bottom of of everything and it's not just dead matter we're not just you know puppets walking around on on you know living things live you know occupying an otherwise dead universe which i think is what a lot of sort of materialist people think right we're actually expressions of the universe and what we what we experience as life is is something that the universe is uh, that that's that's an essential part of the universe, right? And it, it's not that we just happen to be alive and then we'll die and then it'll be gone. It, it's th this thing we call life is something we're we're kind of partaking in. And yet, and yet, you you're uh, skeptical of reincarnation. I'm I'm skeptical of reincarnation. Yeah. Well, when it's see, I read some of the books. Yeah. <laughs> when, when the the way reincarnation is usually uh, explained doesn't sound very reasonable to me. You know, you die and then you come back as something else. I I, I got in. It's funny. No matter what I say about the subject of reincarnation, I get in trouble. You know, the right. other the other day I said, well, you know, if you ask me, I I think if you ask me what happens after we die, I'd say, well, basically, I don't know because I'm not dead. But on the other hand, I do I do feel that something happens after we die. Right. But I wouldn't want to speculate on it any further than that, because speculating on it further than that is sort of you're just making up stories. But all these people that oh, I was a everybody's a prince and they were a queen and yeah they were, yeah everybody's I was yeah. Marilyn Monroe in a past life and I was this and I, I was, was that. Marilyn. Yes, I, nobody was. A, I think, I think nobody was a janitor in their past life. <laughs> nobody was a, 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 you know. I was Marilyn Monroe's janitor. That's <laughs> what I was. <laughs> you saying, Josie? I think that's a, a very. A lot of people have a very literal interpretation of that. I right. mean, nothing ever really, really dies because we're all just. It's just energy. We're all like recycled. Light, <laughs> like light. Never and trust me, really she saw Alice Cooper. She knows. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, he got his head chopped off and he didn't even die. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, as far as the word God, it's just, it's, it's a tiny word for tiny minds. I mean, there's... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's one, we have one to call it something. It. We have to call it, you know, the energy of right. the universe something. So I think and God I think was the word that humans decided to use because it's simple and easy well, it's, it's for little it, minds. It's part of Western <laughs> culture to use that word God, and, and not every culture uses it. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the other thing. From a Buddhist perspective, you, you can say, okay, Buddhism doesn't believe in God, and that's that's true as far as it goes, mm -hmm. but it's 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 because they never really, in that, the, the, there was that big East-West split that happened about 2,000 years ago in right. human history, and then it's just been kind of now coming together in the past 100 years. But they, they never had that. You know, the Buddha, the early Buddhists never had to deal with the concept of God. But now we do. You right. Know? As, as, as I'm looking at your Ronald Reagan pin on your oh, yeah. jacket. Oh, yeah. There's, there's <laughs> Ronald Reagan. And, and, and there's and God and right and there. there. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's remind, I'm reminded that people in government all well, over they, the world. Uh, yeah. they, they believe in God. There's a, yeah, to them, there is a Chris Cornell in the sky that's dictating everybody's movements. And you know, I wonder my, my guy's going to kick your guy's ass yeah. and the whole thing. Well, that's definitely. Which true. turns me off to religion, organized religion. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not really uh, a fan of religion myself, and that that was one of the things that got me into uh, the Zen practice because it was. You could argue uh, back and forth forever about whether Zen is a religion or not, and there and there are good arguments on both sides. I happen to fall on the it's not a religion side most of the time. Right. Uh, but there there are rituals and there are things that we do and there are chants mm -hmm. and all this business. Robes. Robes. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, hate, I hate those robes. I have to wear them sometimes. You got to see I a really picture of him with like a robe. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not good. I'm not good with robes. It's not hilarious. I mean, it's, it, it 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 is good, but it's not. You're more comfortable wearing but regular the, clothes, the, I would imagine. The chicks dig the robes, though. That's, I'll that's bet they one. do. That, that's, that's a weird thing. This is the Paul McCartney the of the Buddhist world. <laughs> <laughs> 
it, it, there's the whole not, Brad, not to be sexist. Today, but, well, uh, I'm gonna get to the uh, the Brad Warner paradox in a second, but okay. but Helen. Mm. Yes. Other crazy adult movies. I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm, I'd rather talk about like my shows coming up or something. Let's say yeah. about your okay. shows coming. Up. Okay. <laughs> oh please. Uh, <laughs> I've like I have talked so much about my adult stuff. I'm then we're not gonna it. talk about. It. Let's All hear right. about the shows. Okay. What's yeah. going on with the shows? So I'm DJing the full moon party at Los Globos on June 24th, and then I'm going to be what? doing a. What's uh, that about? Um, it's just it's a party they have every full moon, and um, just a electro, uh, dubstep, that sort of thing. And do they have performers also? Uh, yeah, it's like DJs. Ellie's going to be there. Yeah, I mean, Where's you know. Los Globos? Los uh, Globos. It's, uh, it's like at Sunset Junction. Oh, okay. I've been by there. I know yeah, that place. Yeah. yeah. And then on the 28th, I'm doing um, the Studio 69 party. And that's at a new location. It's downtown, I think, uh, at, uh, what is it? Is it one of Parish? Three ele- yeah, it's 311 Live parties? or something like that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I, might have to, I might have to check that out. Now, uh-huh. now when you DJ, do you... Do you put on the show, or are you just all about the music? Um, actually, I do put on a show, um, because uh, usually if I'm DJing, like at the last, Glo- Lo- the last Los Globos party, um, I uh, DJed and went straight into uh, performing the first single from my upcoming EP. So you, so sing, you sing, too? Yeah, yeah I, I write the songs, um, so did Barry compose Manuel, the music, uh, perform them live. And, That's uh, great. Yeah, I do it with my writing partner. Uh, Why Shankar. didn't you tell me, Josie, <laughs> how talented Helly was? Helly's very talented. Now you tell you, me. You should come down and, and no, see probably, her, I'm sure will, her yeah. DJ. She does perform and she she dances around. Yeah, you can. Josie came with me. Or as well, much as she came at the can, last one. Why, why, well, know, the reason I say that DJing. is I've, se- I've seen DJs and people that just do electronics. I've seen people just stand there and just mm-hmm. do the music. Mm-hmm. I went to a, a Comic Cry show last night. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's just like one guy singing and one guy, uh, in, you know, just basically with a Mac and, and doing keyboard stuff and sequence okay. stuff. Mm-hmm. But they put on a great show. And mm-hmm. even the guy with the sequence, he would just jump out and start ju- jumping in the crowd. And it was a great show. Mm-hmm. Except for they had, uh, it was this weird old bar in Glendale and the like pipes the were leaking. Yeah, the pipes yeah. were leaking and... I don't know what was dripping on my head, but uh, oh, probably condensation from the sweat in that room. It gets really hot in there. So when when you so <laughs> let's hope. So I mean, <laughs> so when you DJ, you you dance, you 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 yeah, put I on the show. I get into the music. I try to get the the audience into it as well, you know, because you know they're there to see a show. And it's really the, boring to just like yeah, watch seen, a DJ. Like I I've I've been to like you know clubs say on the on the strip and seen you know a big table and a laptop and one guy standing in front of it and that's the DJ. Like he doesn't even have headphones on, and I think that's just. That, that's just not kinda, I've, seen, I've seen people like, do like something. They don't don't put them on the stage. Put them in the corner if that's what they're gonna do. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen that. <laughs> then yeah. it's strong. <laughs> because, yeah. <laughs> but that's cool. I, and uh, I I had no idea. I had no idea you're so multi talented. Mm. There's so much about you. You're Canadian. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, half, half Canadian and actually American now. But so now you guys are musicians <laughs> now. What's going on in the music industry? There's no music industry, really. Uh, I mean, live performance is basically. You know what? DJs are just they're they're kind of that is where where the concerts at now. You know, yeah. like you drive down, you know, drive through Hollywood, you're gonna see billboards for all the you know summer parties and all these Vegas, DJs. Vegas, that's all there yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, you know, everyone's like Tiesto, Dead Mouse. You know, they've all got residencies out in Vegas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 just it's just weird. I don't I don't even know if I was uh, if I was uh, uh, growing up where I would go as far as Musically and yeah. rebelling against my parents, I would yeah. have no idea what to do. It's hard There's to rebel. There's still live music. Yes, Josie Cat sings once in a while. I understand. I'm not talking about me. I mean, no, no, there's still live know, music. But I just saw Iggy Pop play. To no, I'm saying like a, a new people. new bands. New, there well, are there you, are some yeah. great new Iggy Pop. Bands, Iggy though. Pop's not as fresh as you would think. He's he's been around for a while. <laughs> I like Iggy Pop. No, but come I'm on, sure yeah, he's, he's not, been around for a while. I'm sure he's not very fresh. But you would know better than I would. But. Hey, he, he's, anyway. he's still rocking it. <laughs> no, but that's but that's great. And uh, and um, <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna you, you are you looking to transition more into being a singer now? Um, I, my record label is gonna be launching on June 14th, which is actually oh, wow. my birthday. Your, your own label? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you're coming to my birthday. <laughs> She's going to have a big birthday party. I, I, know, I, I noticed <laughs> we're not invited. We're, yeah, yeah. We, it's we, at we Cheetah's. We it's invited. at Cheetah's. They're going to do like... Oh, my friend lives uh, across the street from there. Metal, titties, and beer. Then you got a parking spot. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's hard to find parking around you said, what, what you said? Me- Friday, Did you say right? metal, metal, titties, and beer? Metal, titties, and titties and beer, yeah. That's that sounds like my kind a, of party. It's, it's June 14th. It's a white trash Barbie party. It's, uh, yeah, June 14th. Wow. 
gonna, I'm gonna walk over there. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, is Friday. So, yeah, no, yeah. Is, so. uh, is it your birthday? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Happy, birthday. Happy birthday! I'm oh. also a Gemini. Oh, uh, so you have four girls in the room. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. Wait, <laughs> girls. Oh, 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 oh geez. <laughs> yeah. And you, 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 <laughs> one personality between the two of you is enough, but then you got mm, two. Multiple. Yeah. Oh, t- Anyway, things are falling apart. I don't know what's going on, Brad. <laughs> it sounds good to me. I, I was, yeah, I was, I was just picturing the two of you like splitting apart and like two for Brad, two for me, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> was, was sort of, ha- Emery could kind of get one, you know, one of those. Who gets things. the evil it, one? Who gets the good one? Well, I, I would get the evil one. <laughs> I just watched that In Star Trek where Captain man. Kirk gets split into the good Kirk and the bad Kirk. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not talking to any nerds here. <laughs> no, no, these two oh. aren't nerdy at all. Uh, <laughs> but that's the other thing too. Nerds are in now. Yeah, yeah, that's nerds are like the total thing. Like, I don't know what happened. Like, Skrillex, Skrillex coming up. Skrillex and brought glasses back. What's it? Yeah, I think I have a theory. Skrillex. Skrillex brought glasses back. Oh, oh really? I, yeah. And me with my fucking twenty twenty vision. Wow. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I remember. No, Skrillex. I remember Lisa Lowe with the glasses. Come on, the glasses thing's hot on girls. That's going back a while. I know, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I was a little, I was a little kid, and you know, it's one of those things. And every girl I see with the horn room glasses now, I'm just like, ooh. Well, tired. yeah, because they, they, you developed that fetish early, and it just stayed Well, I, I was actually in gifted classes when I was in elementary school, and the girls with the glasses and stuff, mm. yeah. they, they wouldn't give me the time of day. Oh. And, and, I but, thought you were in the short bus classes. Yeah. Yeah. Short bus classes. Yeah, that, that, that's right, Josie. <laughs> Special class. Uh, by the way, let me, get, let me get Hell's Bell on dial here, so uh, I might need a new co-host. Helly? Oh. Helly, oh. uh, uh, what are you doing next week? What? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Josie, no. Uh, yeah, I was on the short bus, Josie. That's, uh, that's why I have a, a that's show. That's a good question. We, we, I was having Whoa. Let, let, me, let, me, let me go back to I intelligent conversation. No, you didn't piss me off. You couldn't, you couldn't piss me off if you okay. tried. Good. Well, actually, you have, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brad, we were talking about God. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Cause that, and by the way, Holly, the, the only reason I brought up the porn thing is I thought, like, after all that, all that deep God conversation, talk, yeah, the, yeah. I was like, Okay, what's the furthest thing awake I could do? And that, so I didn't want to get into it. You've talked enough. Your music career is what I'm, I'm interested in. Me now. too. I, th- th- that porn pays the bills so I can do music. It's good. Yeah. yeah. And and I mean, whatever works. Yeah. I, think I, I think I saw that on Craigslist ad, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> short bus? I don't think so. But uh, No, but that's good. No, I, I think you've got the look. I don't know how you sound. Do we? We don't. We, I, we don't have the song. I don't know. I tried to email the song. It, you it downloaded it. I just got an email saying that the download. Oh, did you download yeah. it? Oh. I. Let me check. Go ahead. Well, okay. you can sing it live. Yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, Brad, did you bring your bass? Bass. Maybe, maybe we could get a little. I, I, actually, I got one in the car. We could get a, like a whole jam session going. Yeah. And Josie, she was in the uh, band Pissant. Oh, sounds and, good. And, and I. Punk I, rock. I, I have absolutely no musical talent whatsoever, and uh, so. But, I don't either. That's why I sing. Right. right. Those without talent sing. Oh, okay. Okay. So anyway, I uh, can't sing. So, uh, <laughs> but I sing. But just like but Brad, drummers Brad, without a girlfriend are homeless. Brad, you're you're having a living room tour. Yes. Yes. For your new uh, book, that's uh, right. there a is living no room God. tour. Yeah. Let's describe what a living room tour is. Yeah, well, it was it was my friend Piruz's idea. P- Piruz Kale is this guy who's directing a well, he directed. It's finished, it, but it hasn't come out yet. It's a, a documentary about me. And then he had this idea uh, that uh, to do this thing, a living room tour. And I guess a lot of people are doing this uh, these days, so I'm not the first. But basically, you just put the word out that, that you're going to be uh, between this city and that city during these days. Does anybody want to host a talk? And so that's what I did on the blog. I said, uh, you know, here, here's where I'm going to be. Okay. And I used to call that couch surfing. Yeah, it's like couch <laughs> surfing, only, only I have to do a performance each night, you know. So, so I go Josie in. Josie did, too. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> anyway. You set me up. Go ahead. No, no, so, go so ahead. I'm going. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know the itinerary off the top of my head, but I'm starting in Toronto and ending in uh, New York, uh, and doing uh, Philadelphia, uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Akron, and Cleveland, which right. is where I'm from. Uh, and that's. And you're gonna do shows with your your old band. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do some shows with Zero Defects there. And but, but everywhere I'm doing, I, I'm I'm bringing a bunch of books with me and gonna talk about the books and uh, hopefully sell a few to pay the bills for the to get to the next town, uh, and and try to kind of bring the thing uh, to the people because I got normally what I do when I when I do talks is I, I get uh, 
you know, I get invited to different places. A lot of times it's New Age bookstores, and New Age bookstores are fine, but often the audience there is, you know, some people who are not really into what I'm talking about, or, you know, I get... I get so I thought, I thought it'd be interesting to, uh, to bring it right to the people who really want it. Right. You know, and, and, and uh, we'll see. I, you know, I'm going out on this alone, so I, I hope I don't, uh, you know... I hope there's no, like... Uh, she puts the lotion on her skin, <laughs> and, or else she gets the hose, or he, maybe, in my case. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> so I may end up there. So, you know, if you if you don't hear from me after this yeah, tour, th- that's where I am in somebody's uh, yeah, basement. If you're I'm waiting for the next Brad Warner book, it might be a long wait. <laughs> yeah. But who knows? I, who knows? It could, I mean, it sounds like a, it sounds like a, a I think it'll night. be fun. I, I, could see, I, I could see myself doing a living room tour. I want to do that with my, with my band. Yeah, I think the living room tours. The, the people that I've <laughs> heard of show up at, at people I don't know. Let's do the Dark Mark <laughs> show <laughs> living room tour. Well, I've heard of like folk folk bands do this a right. lot, you know, because they got acoustic instruments. It's sure. easy, but you could do it with comedy. That would be, that would be kind of intriguing. Yeah, you, no, you I, never know how well, many. You know. I've done house parties before, and yeah. I always like I don't, I don't know how it's going, and it always goes great. They love it, and yeah. you're hanging out with them afterwards. It's great, but and you know, I think this. this uh, I was just about to say something, but then. I really wanted to hear Helly's song. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want to hear Helly? Huh? Let's hear it. I would like to. Slide it up. Slide, Slide it up. Oh, that's what she oh. said. Slide it up. Hold on. So, Helly, tell us about the song. Um, this is going to be my second single um, from and my EP. And it's called, called Stay in the Light. And um, I uh, co-wrote it with, uh, with uh, Sergio Varela. And um, uh, Shankar is also singing vocals on it. Shankar. Yeah. And sorry, and I'm what's sorry. the song about? Can you disclose <laughs> that? <laughs> well, it's kind of loosely sorry. based on bipolar disorder. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I have a song called Speak Up. I, I go, okay. Speak Up, Bitch. It's the same thing. <laughs> oh, you better like listen that. up, bitch. Helly single's coming on now, okay? You ready for it? Ready. I'm ready. Boys, move. I want to see some movement. That's right, we're visual. Just a taste. What's that song called again, Helly? It's called uh, It's called Stay in the Light. Your voice sounds so good. Oh, I love it. Thank I love you. it. I can see the analog uh, references. Yeah. It has that kind of uh, retro almost. It was, uh, it's it was a trip. Yeah, it was just, we just kind of, we started writing and just, um, it just came out that way. We didn't really have any specific genre in mind. Mm-hmm. We just, you know composed what we liked and it just sort of happened it's yeah, very like throbby that. Giorgio Moroder sort of thing. yeah yeah Giorgio Moroder that's, yeah. that's definitely that's, that's really funny that you said that um somebody else said that earlier today yeah yeah <laughs> that's that's a, that's quite a compliment though yeah no 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 I they explained that to me <laughs> <laughs> oh I was like who <laughs> never no, no, mind no. I'll look it up. It, 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 <laughs> it's, it up. It's, it's huge, isn't it? Though I mean, no, yeah, it's, no it, it, the beat is the beat is great. I can yeah. see that on a dance floor. That's that's one of those songs where, when that you're on this dance floor with a girl, you just can't help but grind. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what you want. Yeah. You know, you know, like you want to be able to grind. Like when you Get happen to be on a dance floor with a girl and like Madison Nails' closer is on, uh-huh. you know, some grinding's gonna happen. Uh-huh. 
Ah. I could see that with that song. That's, that's good, cool. Yeah. That, that's really awesome to be like or maybe that's compared just... to Nine Inch Nails. Well, you know, because that's Closer. got kind of <laughs> that's got kind of a throbby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yours yeah. is like that, yeah. but a little, you know, faster. Yeah, mm. one twenty-eight BPM. Okay. So, I didn't. I didn't count. <laughs> so, do you plan on doing a full uh, album? Um, actually, I think it would probably be in my best interest just to do an EP and just like maybe like release two EPs a year and keep it, mm. you know, keep it constant. Yeah, that's great. Now, is that manageable yeah. and yeah. and cranking out. When, yeah. when when is that song going to be available? Uh, well, uh, that's probably going to be available in July. The uh, the first single, which is called Mirage, is going to be um, released on uh, the fourteenth this friday on beatport and then Your we'll birthday. probably yeah we oh. just co coincided it that way and um and then this one will come out in july will it be on itunes also? um it's going to come out on it'll probably be a beatport exclusive for two weeks and then go out onto uh, worldwide okay right. excellent yeah. beatport is I, I please tell me i don't, yeah. I don't oh, know it's, beatport a, either. it's like uh it's the uh, largest um distributor of dance music in uh well online oh wow in in the world probably yeah. Oh wow! Well. Uh, so so on, it's going to be on Beatport on Friday. Uh, not this particular song. Uh, Mirage is going to be. Mirage is going to be on yeah. Beatport on Friday. Yeah. This is this is brand new. I just got that back from getting mastered this morning at three o'clock. Oh, well. yeah. Can you believe it? We got it's a dark we got March. It right. You so got you got the it's world exclusive. premiere. And by the way, this book. Premiere. There is no God, but He's always with you. It's not out yet either. That'll be out tomorrow. Ooh. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah, well, that's official, the official release date. Although although I've heard people are getting it. My dad ordered a copy off of Amazon, and he got his already. It drops so. tomorrow. But yeah, tomorrow is the, so, the official release date. So you can you can order this. And we'll have a spree cast tomorrow. Uh, but I, unfortunately, I don't remember the link for that. But we're doing a kind of a, a, a virtual book launch thing tomorrow, uh, 6, six o'clock. Yeah, I, got, I, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, it I'm sure it's going to be quite different because... It should you, be interesting. Josie, you know what time it is? What time? Helly, do you want to tell us about your website real quick before we... My website? Yeah, do before... Our, do you have a website that we could go to or our <laughs> yeah, before, Twitter? Before. You know what, actually? Where well, we could you follow know, you? Um, where can, where can you follow you? Helly? Where Helly? Can you? You, can, you can follow me um, on Twitter at Hellywood number four ever, Hellywood forever. And um, Instagram is Hollywood Official. And um, actually, I do have a website uh, with uh, my DJ duo partner, Brittany Andrews, DJ Britstar, and it's BlanteRageDJs.com. Blanteraj. I didn't even Excellent. get to Blanteraj. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, no, that, that's, uh, that's how I ended up uh, over in uh, You'll have in to have your back, Hallie. We got, we'll have all of Blanteraj here next time, maybe. If Ooh. you want to fly Brittany in from New York, I'm sure she'd love to come. <laughs> um, maybe maybe Greyhound. Brad, <laughs> you're, no, you're no, no, we no, need no. an airline sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Hardcore Zen blog. Hardcorezen.info uh, is uh, trust we me, it's, it's funny, uh insightful stuff. Uh he talks about uh, uh, talks about all sorts of stuff. Uh we didn't even get to the Dalai Lama, your you know, yeah, 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 everybody hates it whenever I mention the Dalai Lama. I love the Dalai Lama. Well, we, I like the Dalai Lama too. I, I, people have this weird we call impression him, that I hate speak. the Dalai Lama. We call him the DL, yeah. and next time you come, yeah. we're going to talk about the Dalai Lama. But oh, you, my God. You know what time it is now? I have no idea. It's time for the spanking train. But, Brad, <laughs> what, el what else do you want to talk about? What, 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 uh, what websites? Uh, what, what, what are we doing? Uh, I don't know. Um, you, you got me. You follow him on Twitter. <laughs> follow him on Facebook. You had me at spank train. <laughs> <laughs> I am the I'm like the uh, one of the top uh, ten Buddhists to follow on Twitter according to Huffington Post and and my name there is just Brad Warner um, so and also look up the Brad Warner paradox we didn't get into that but there is a paradox uh, yeah I've heard <laughs> and right now and I'm wearing a paradox right now <laughs> hey, <-o! laughs> hey now <laughs> that's for you Brad oh thank you. That's for you, Helly. For novelty okay, use so only. Yes, yeah, don't, don't 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 <laughs> say the name of the person. Don't say the name of the company. It's not sponsored. Oh, okay. Like Fatal oh. Impact. But it's time for the spank train, oh. ladies Can you get and gentlemen. This in Fatal Impact. I'll look into it. Let's uh, get up and we're gonna do the spank train. I, I don't know how to. Spank do it. train I, I, I don't know through. how to do this. Either. Okay. We'll go. we'll teach you. All right. It's very simple. Okay. Just take off your headphones. Do you have feedback. Yeah. part is now when we switch. Okay. <laughs> 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 Have a 
wonderfully creepy week, everybody.